welcome to the very first episode of the Employee to Boss podcast. I am so excited that you are here. And the very first episode, I had to start off with two of my favorite ladies. This week's guests and the first guests on the Employee to Boss podcast are Terry and Sarah, the founders of Females Who Side Hustle, a community for like-minded, motivated females to connect, feel supported, and gain resources. Their mission is to create a space for meaningful connections through open conversations and shared experiences. I had to start off this podcast with this episode because a lot of you may be experiencing some, you know, feedback about your side hustle or some questions about it, maybe from friends or family or coworkers. And they're basically acting like having a side hustle is like a dirty little secret when that's not it at all. Entrepreneurship should not feel lonely. And that is absolutely what Terry and Sarah's community is all about. It's about collaborating. It's about empowering. And it's basically everything that this podcast stands for. So I am so excited for you to listen to this episode, and I hope it helps you put into perspective that your side hustle is impressive. What you're doing is impressive. Not everyone can do this. You are special, your side hustle is special, and what you're doing matters. And so let's get right into this episode with Terry and Sarah, the founders of Females Who Side Hustle. I am so excited for this conversation because a lot of the listeners want to start their side hustle or they have their side hustle and want to go a little more into it, maybe go part-time in their business, part-time in their side hustle. I don't know. So let's just talk to them. Let's teach them a little bit about how you two got started and really about the whole community that you've built. Amazing. Happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we're so excited. Of course. I know. I was so happy when you guys agreed to be on because you two are just so perfect and have such an interesting dynamic in your business. So we do. (laughs) Yeah. So tell us about how you two connected um, and kind of what your business is about. Yeah. Amazing. So I usually start on this. We usually have a thing. So my name is Terry Canistrero. Um, We both live in Niagara, Ontario, Canada, because I know you're in the States and I think there's a bit of a time difference, but needless to say, we, or I am 38 years old. I am a professor. I am a side hustler. I've been side hustling for about 10 years. I'm a mom of two babies. I've been married for Oh my God. I think like 11 or 12 years. Hopefully my (laughs) husband doesn't listen to this, but he is our biggest supporter. So he might listen. Sorry, Justin. Anyways, we got connected through, um, when Sarah was one of my students and we weren't super close then, but Sarah has a vibe about her. You're going to hear her talk. You're going to hear her vibe. And I was just super attracted to her positivity and her vibe. And it wasn't until she actually became a colleague of mine that we really connected. So I'll let Sarah introduce herself and then we'll talk more about what we do. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. So I'm Sarah also like Terry said in the Niagara region, but not born and raised. I came here for post-secondary and I say post-secondary kind of led me here and kept me here because I did my undergrad in speech and language sciences, which is so random, and then switched gears into event management, which is where I met Terry. Really admired her as a professor in the field and all the experience and real world knowledge she brought into the classrooms. And yeah, just connected with her as somewhat of a mentor in the space. And I always say she went from like mentor to business owner, soul sister. Now (laughs) it's just like so connected in our lives. But like Terry said, wasn't super close in the program, really looked up to her in that she was a business owner, a faculty member as a a faculty as well. And I just loved learning from her. And once I became, or I got my first job outside of school, I worked at the college and we just stayed connected. It was just coffee chats here and there. And it was when Terry got back from her maternity leave that she was like, let's catch up. Let's grab a coffee. This was just like a two sentence email. Yeah. (laughs) And we ended up connecting and she's like, I just need something more. I see you doing all these things. I want to do 
something with other people who are doing things. I yeah, remember I felt- that just being the conversation. Like, yeah. <laughs> I need something and I want to connect with other people who also need something. I just mm-hmm. felt super alone. Like I mentioned before, I had, I had my own wedding planning business on top of what I, w- when I was working in hospitality and then on top of my uh, faculty position in the post-secondary. And I was always, you know, missing things on the weekend, but I loved my side hustle. I loved planning weddings for my clients. I loved the hustle and bustle of it, but a lot of people didn't understand what I did. And so for a long time, I was just like, well, this is what I do. I'm different than everybody else, whatever. And I just kind of kept my head down and did it for a very long time. But then something in me just kind of sparked. And I was like, no, there are other people like (laughs) me. There are other people who have multiple cups that they need to be Mm -hmm. filled. And I need to connect with those people because I don't want to feel alone anymore. And literally when I say Sarah's a vibe, I like scanned in my head, all of the people that I knew when I was on maternity leave. And I was like, Sarah Singleton will help me (laughs) articulate what I'm trying to say. And I, like she mentioned, we met for a coffee and that evening she came back with our very first logo of female suicide hustle. And that was January 30th. No, January 31st, 2019. We always get that wrong. Yeah. 2019. Because it's and been, it, was just it feels like forever. In the conversation we were having, just wanting to connect with people our age. And I say our age, we're 10 years apart. Mm-hmm. And I felt the same way Terry did that. There wasn't people who were either entering their professional career or doing multiple things in their lives that could openly connect and have conversations and share experiences. And by the end of our coffee, we were like, okay, what about females who side hustle? And I was like, yes. yes. <laughs> like we and birthed the baby. We were just like, we're going to put it out online and see what we get. Like this wasn't even, neither of us were really into Instagram then. Both had personal, like probably had like a couple hundred followers yeah. and was like, let's just put it out there. See what like we can build. And I didn't even think of it as a community. Then I th- thought, there's got to be other people who want to talk. I always said like friending as an adult ain't easy. <laughs> so it's nice to create those meaningful friendships that are rooted in the same interests of business, personal development, side hustle, whatever it is, and have those conversations. So yeah, we are living definitely. proof <laughs> that you do not need a plan for your business or you don't need a business plan. You just need a plan for some sort of aspect of, of your, your business. business. Like we just automatically knew our why and grew from that. We didn't sit down and write out, you know, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. We Mm -hmm. just went with it day by day and we baby stepped our way through the entire thing, which we still do to this day. Yeah. So fast forward to 2021, we're two and a half years in and we launched our podcast one on our one-year anniversary called Save Her Seat, which is just another way to reach women in business entrepreneurs, side hustlers, and talk about the success, but also shine light on the struggles and kind of pull back the curtain on entrepreneurship that it's not as glamorized as it looks. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, grew to over a thousand or sorry, grew to over 10,000 followers on Instagram in under two years. So there was definitely a need for this space. And that's what we love so much is that we've grown organically with our community being like, okay, what do we need? What are people wanting to talk about? What are people needing support in? And yeah, it just really was a snowball effect. That's awesome. Definitely entrepreneurship can be very isolating and very lonely. Everyone looks at us who are in their corporate jobs and are like, oh, you can take time off whenever you can do this. You can do that. But let me tell you, when I first started my business, I probably took zero days off, right? Right. I'm alone in this and you two are together, but it's really just you two building your whole business and taking time off just feels guilty. Oh yeah. I was on a podcast a couple of weeks ago and he ends each episode with kind of a word of advice. And I don't know if he chose this specifically for me, but I was like, he is speaking directly to me here. He said, (laughs) When we are in this entrepreneurial field, we surround ourselves with other entrepreneurs, right? But in reality, not everyone is an entrepreneur. It's just Mm. you, you are being out here, you're doing your thing, you're being loud about it, but you're surrounding yourself with people like you. And so we get down on ourselves like, oh, they just made 
10 sales in one day. They just right. got 10,000 followers in two years, right? That's amazing. But we're comparing ourselves to people who are in the same field when there's so many others out there who are just scared to post on Instagram in the first place. Right. Yeah. Right. We're scared to start their business. We're comparing ourselves to the people who already did it. Yeah. When really we shouldn't compare ourselves to anyone all. Because yeah. no yeah. one is <laughs> no one is in the same place as you are. Right. And that's one of the main things I wanted to talk to you two about on here. It's kind of the the mindset around community over competition and really mm -hmm. creating your community. So you did create yeah. an amazing community of females who feel empowered by you two and feel like they have a space to go. And the whole competition thing is so, oh, like, it's, it's so like, like, right? it's annoying I I everywhere. Here. <laughs> and so how did you two kind of get to that mindset of, we don't need a business plan. Let's just do our own thing and see what happens. Let's not compare ourselves to other. Let's just do it. Yeah. I think yeah. one of the things that really kind of drove us and our purpose is a lot of times when someone has this side hustle, you know, it's looked at as like a bad thing. Like you can't tell your employer that you have a side hustle because that means that you're unhappy in your job and you want to leave Please. that. And that's not the case for so many of us. I've been doing it for 10 plus years because I have different cups to fill. Mm -hmm. So that's just the one thing about the side hustle. It's like, there's this name, there's a couple of different things that like we're trying to debunk about the name. And the first one is that it's not a bad or like dirty thing. And yeah, it's not like your dirty little secret you have to keep. Like, yeah. You can like, tell people, you can tell it. people and you should tell people about it and nobody should make you feel bad about having that. And then, um, for the competition, uh, piece of it, when I felt super lonely, I knew, and it's not so much the competition, but I just knew people looked in on my bubble, like into my world and they just kind of didn't understand it. And so that's what like kind of switched my mind. And I was kind of like, I just need to tell people more. Like, I don't want them to make an assumption about me. I want them to have the facts about me and what I do. And so that's when I started talking about what I did more, I got a lot of positive feedback. And so that's kind of what sparked the community over competition. Like we don't need to compete with anybody else. There yeah. is so much room for everybody. What Haley does on her podcast and what Terry and Sarah do on their podcast are two amazing things, even though they're in, you know, they're the kind of on the space. same highway, right? Mm -hmm. But we have our own lane. You don't drive on top of another car when you're on a highway, you're <laughs> exactly. driving side by side and you're like honking and waving. Yeah. And that's what we kind of wanted to really make sure that we started to change because competition is exhausting. Yeah. And the comparison game is like, no joke. Like it can really do damage. And I just think that women I have always had, well, I shouldn't say always, but in my later years, oh, 28 of them, <laughs> but like after, well, throughout university and beyond, I've had a really supportive group of women in my life. And I feel like women compete with each other in a lot of areas of life, whether that is by choice or not, and it needs to stop. And entrepreneurship is a lonely road and you don't need to compare or compete with women who are in the same space or area. And I had a friend who was a, who is a male friend and was like, jokingly like save her seat. Like, what about me? What about my seat? And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, missing the mark here. This has nothing to do with men. This is about inviting more women to the table and that there is a seat for all of us mm -hmm. and that you don't need to compete. So that is like the mentality that we approach with. And there's also that framework or mindset to get in of the, like pushing away that, like, why not me mentality when you're working towards something and you're seeing someone else achieve it. And you're like, oh, why not me? Like, why wasn't it my Instagram that hit or oh, wasn't my, it my term, business yeah. that took off? Like, when is it going to be mine? And it's just kind of framing that focus to be back your energy towards getting to where you want to be instead of comparing where you want to be. So Absolutely. that's where we kind of put our brains thoughts, together brain and power <laughs> together. Yeah. And birth that baby of all of those things that we want to help other people kind of get rid of. That's awesome. I work with podcasters all the time. That's my business. Espresso podcast production. So I help good. podcasters monetize and 
make their podcast the best it can be. I also have a podcast launch course. And so I work with a lot of people who want to start. One of the things they always come to me and say is there's so many other people in the same niche as me. There's so many other people in the same industry as me. And what I always have to remind them is just like we have similar podcasts, right? What makes us unique is ourselves. You two have your own chemistry. I have my own thing. That's what I have to tell them. And when I say it, it sounds so common or it sounds Mm -hmm. so like typical, like you are what makes your podcast special. You are what makes your podcast stand out. But when I say it to them, they're like, you're so right. Like these other people aren't me. It's kind of like a light bulb that goes off. It's like that smack in the face moment. Mm -hmm. Like, what was I thinking? Because we say that all the time. Like you, what you bring to the table is unique to anyone else. You can be in the same space just because that's like the number one well, I would say like top five things that people don't start is because they're like, oh, someone's already doing that, yeah. but they're not doing it how you would do it. Exactly. So, yeah. Don't let it like hinder your start just because there's other people in that space. Exactly. And there was only one restaurant in the world. Oh my God. So boring. <laughs> like, the world would be so, so boring. boring. <laughs> yeah. So boring. Like, and I just, again, I feel like you cannot it's not like a math equation. Like you can give anybody one plus one equals two and we're all going to get it. It's entrepreneurship. You, the way you're built, the way you think, the way you do everything is not one plus one equals two. It is so different. You're getting to the end result so differently than somebody else. And that's the most beautiful thing about side hustling, owning a business, entrepreneurship, whatever you want to call it. That's what you have to grab onto. Like that's what you have to remind yourself of. And, and truthfully, there are a lot of people who want that secret sauce and they mm-hmm. want the shortcut to make it to 10 K and they want the shortcut to make that, their like, first overnight million success. And right. I've never, ever seen that happen for anybody, nor will I'll put money down on it. All of the money I've saved for my kids mm-hmm. tuition, that will not happen. It will not, not happen. So don't even try to go that way. kudos if it does but it's just not the reality of like the norm like the one percent maybe you'll have like a viral moment and take advantage of that but in general like it takes a lot more I want to say like elements aspects Mm -hmm. things along the way Mm -hmm. to lead into your own definition of success or whatever it is so and how unfulfilling would it be if just one day we woke up there was no oh work towards anything we just had that result like like, oh here you go an envelope full of all of the answers no thank you honestly no thank you yeah I just imagine like everything I've worked towards I've been in my business for about like a year and a half almost two years and what if I had this when I first started I would have never kept going you wouldn't be the same you wouldn't have the same work ethic you wouldn't have the same like grit along the way because you build those things into your business along the way so yeah I don't if it was just handed to you I don't think it would be I don't think it would sustain the same result it might stay for a day but it wouldn't stay for longer yeah and I think actually when I think about the 10k like those vanity metrics right we were getting close to it and I was like oh my god and I like oddly became hyper focused on it And it didn't happen for a long time. We hovered around the like 97, 98 for way longer than I would have bet money on because we were on this amazing trajectory. But it absolutely smucked me in the face because I was like, okay, I cannot be focused on things like that. Like, let's get back to the roots. And truthfully, so I know you can't see it, but the personal growth that I have experienced in my business, in my years of business, totally outweighs the amount of money we've made and the amount of vanity metrics that people are are viewing us, you know, from the sidelines. Like I, I can't even explain to you how much better of a person I am because of all the struggles and the things that I've been through while I was trying to figure out my passions and fill my own cups. Absolutely. Which I think is like, it's that priceless point of it. Right. Yeah. So priceless. And one of the things that, of course, I want to encourage everyone to start their own business If they hate their nine to five, I want this podcast to be able to encourage them to kind of step out of that, but it's not always reality. For me, my business started because I was laid off during COVID and I was kind of forced into full-time in this. Right. And so it was perfect for me, but that's not the case for everyone. And so 
you mentioned it a little bit before, but the whole judgment of having a side hustle and the Mm -hmm. whole judgment of having your side hustle while you're still working when you see so many other people full time, right? How do we talk to our friends and family about having side hustles? Because I feel like that's scarier than telling like oh, it's Susan true. in it's Minnesota so who doesn't know you, right? Like, yeah, talking it comes to that fear of clients, judgment. It's not yeah. as scary as talking to like your mother. Oh my God. I, know. So. <laughs> I remember when I told my dad about females who side hustle, he was like, Oh. females females who side hustle like what is that like that's a little like risque Scandalous. Sarah and I was like what <laughs> no what are you talking about so just explaining it more to them which I feel like explaining what you do as a millennial explaining it to your parents is hard enough <laughs> but just being open and saying you know what I'm really passionate about social media and I'm going to pursue that on the side I'm taking on a couple clients or I love my nine to five, but I have guidelines. I have to stay within in my role. And I have like a burning creativity that I need to like give to another outlet. So Mm -hmm. I think it's, it stems back to your why, which we always talk about is like, why did you start? Why do you want to do this and go from there? Because no one is going to understand it as much as you are. So it's just getting comfortable articulating it. I think it's really great to, we talk about crafting and perfecting your elevator pitch. It's who you are, it's who you serve, and it's why you do it and what you're looking for. So just taking, taking the time to practice that is important. You're not going to be confident in doing something for the first time. So practicing your elevator pitch, what you're doing, who you're doing it for, why you're doing it, and saying it over and over out loud so that when someone asks you, what do you do or why are you doing this, you have your crafted response and it comes out confidently. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, you just kind of have to like push judgment aside. If you love what you're doing, not everyone is going to agree with it. Not everyone is going to understand it, but if you are staying true to you and why you want to do it, it doesn't really matter what the judgment is. Yeah. And I feel like it's so easy. Cause I remember being that person, like just kind of starting out and not knowing if it was right for me to do something on the side, like I literally hang on to those feelings. So I never forget them because I think they're very like paramount, but we probably sound very articulate. We might sound intimidating. We might be like, oh, you know, it, they're making it sound so easy. It is not easy. And I'll tell you one story, Sarah and I, for a while, when we started our business, a good six months, couldn't articulate exactly what we thought this community was. Mm -hmm. And then after about six months, it rolled off our tongue. We're telling everybody it was a community. We were like, what is it? What what is it? We couldn't even like put it together. We finally put it together. Everything's fantastic. It rolls off our tongue. We're telling the world we're, you know, like making everyone know who Fuish is. Sarah and I got an opportunity to work with a pretty big partner not too long ago. And we had a film crew come into our house and we're being interviewed for this commercial and we're all pumped. And the first question that the interviewer asks us is like, tell us about, what tell us about yourself is. and tell us about females who side hustle. We Butchered. it up so bad. I was embarrassed. I couldn't come back. Like I was like, oh my God, oh my God, they're going to want to fire us. They're not going to pay us like da, da, da. And then I was like, okay, so it happens to everybody. It, it comes in waves. We just had to get kind of our mojo back because we hadn't had to say who we were for a while on camera. Like, on, like, and it was just a situation. I'm chalking that up a bit to COVID and me losing some of my social, social skills. skills. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> definitely have to practice. You it do. Often, it's the often, only often. way. It's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. And I can kind of feel like redundant saying it over and over or like right now, my big word of the next quarter and probably into the next year is networking. Like that Ooh, is what I, I just it. want to do. I love networking. I see in-person networking coming back soon. And you're right. My social skills have really, really diminished. Like it's tough. (laughs) It's really, really tough. And I just think, yeah, go easy on yourself when you're asking like what people can do to kind of help have these conversations and take away the judgment is find a community behind you. So we are behind anyone and everyone who is starting grinding or thriving in business, in life, in entrepreneurship, in side hustles. And so that you are surrounding yourself with people who are also doing or in the same field of what you are doing so Mm -hmm. that 
when you go to say, okay, someone's asking me what I do, I'm confident that there's over 10,000 other people who are also doing something that they love. So I have the confidence to say this. I think that's one good point that if I could give like the audience of starters, Sarah is so blessed to have her crew who supports us. They were the first people to listen to the podcast. They were the first people to buy our merch. I don't have that. I'm in a different sort of age category, right? Like all the moms were all like sort of, you know, kids and husbands and partners first. And then all this stuff kind of comes on the end um, or in the middle. And, but there are places, don't be afraid to you know, that collaboration over competition, don't be afraid to jump in somebody who's doing what you're doing. Some, something similar that you've looked up to on your Instagram account, reach out to them, make them part of your community. Say your elevator pitch to them. We have a really great example. We talked about elevator pitches. Somebody from out West, listened to our podcast, jumped in our DM on a voice note, mind you, not even typed it out. She voice noted it to us. And she's like, I just had to say my elevator pitch to somebody. And I heard your podcast and it's gotta be you. Like I talk about it right now and I'm getting goosebumps again. Now we've been on her podcast. She's been on our podcast. We talk all of the time. We've we're friends, you know? And so that's what that's all about. So just because maybe if you're like me, not that my friends or family don't support me, but I still kind of feel like they don't necessarily get it. Um, there are people out there who will get it. You just have to find them. I hear the term biz bestie all the time. (laughs) and I love it so much. Like you really do need someone in business that you can kind of bounce your ideas off of. Yes. You know, one of my clients, she's amazing with this. I've been working with her. She was like my second client I ever got and I'm still working with her. And we'll have just co-working sessions sometimes where we'll, we'll go in a zoom room and just mute ourselves and just work together. But it holds us both accountable to just Mm -hmm. be there. And Mm -hmm. that's what I think every single person needs. And so you you two are biz besties and are just, you know, in the same area, which is really nice on this online field. It's common to have a biz bestie in a different state, right? But you two are very unique biz besties. And I don't mean that with any judgment, but you two, like with the age difference is unique, right? And I love that. And I think it's one of those things where we look for someone who's like in the same spot as us in life, same everything. Mm -hmm. And it really limits us to, so what I do on this podcast is I interview people in different topics. It's this, this theory called info sponging, where you learn different topics and different ideas from different industries. Like McDonald's got the drive-through idea from a bank, like just random things like that, that we can learn from each other. And so before we get off the topic of judgment, did you two ever experience any judgment with your age difference or just building a business together? I think not really. I think maybe from your end, people would be like, why Sarah? Because I got that a lot. The age difference. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to think I'm quite mature for my age. <laughs> and like I am, you know, like I we started this when I was 26. Mm-hmm. And I was always very business focused. Like I enjoyed that part of my life. I always was doing multiple things. Like as much as we have an age difference, we have the same interests. So that's what was important to us is connecting with like-minded, motivated females doing what they love. Yeah. And I think we just kind of, I didn't get it on my end from why Terry, because people meet Terry and they're like, oh my God, Terry, <laughs> you know, and it's always such a great, yeah, it really was for me, a mentorship on business partners and now soul sisters and it all. Yeah. But Sarah's right between the two of us, never a judgment. We, that's the one thing that I can't articulate to this day. I cannot tell you in a straight line of words, what it is about Sarah, but we did our, yes, I experienced some judgment on my end, a couple comments here and there. And then also, yeah, the age difference. And we have got to a point where Sarah knows my non-negotiables and my non-negotiables is my family and my family time. And that happens dinner time, bedtime. I don't, I can't, I can't do what she needs me to do between the hours of like four and like eight. Yeah. I just really can't. And never once did Sarah be like, Oh, you need to answer this email. And it's five 30. Like she just 
gets it. And I get her. She, we, even like our age difference, we, our sleep patterns, like she's I working eat at dinner two in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I eat dinner at like eight to 10 PM and I'm sleeping and she eats dinner at like five 30 <laughs> and it's just being respectful of a partnership Yeah, that that's what you're in. And essentially that's what you signed up for. And it works for us because luckily, and I know not everyone has this, but if anyone is starting and is on the fence and thinking about a co-founder or a partner in business, I would highly recommend exploring that, exploring it thoroughly, but yeah, exploring explore it is the key word. <laughs> because our business works longer having two of us on it because between what times we're putting in work, yeah. there's just longer days for us which is great and more gets done and we complement our skill set and what my weaknesses are Terry's strengths are so it's just yeah and it's always someone to lean on in business i think it's important to be very understanding and know what your partner's non-negotiables are and that just comes down to the communication yeah there's never been an issue where i'm like okay you need to be doing this more or i need to be doing this more it's always a we and it's always an us and then we'll figure it out. That's awesome. Cause I know a lot of people want to have co-hosts when they have a podcast just right. for the comfort and the conversation. And a lot of people are scared of that because of, I have talked to so many people who want to basically fire their co-host. And I'm right. like, that is a touchy topic because I'm sure you two were friends before you started this podcast. And this is and that's tough too, is a lot of people see business owners and they're like, they're best friends. I'll start a business with my best friend. When I would say 90 to 95% of the time, those two were not like, Terry was not my best friend. No, <laughs> we've become that in our business, mm -hmm. but lots of times you grow together in your business. You don't start as best friends and then start a business sometimes, but most of the case it's you gain that closeness over time. And I think that's where Sarah kind of nailed it about the exploration. Don't look necessarily in your warm circle. Don't look at your close knit circle on Instagram, really explore something different because we, and that's why we love to tell our story. We are 10 years apart. Yes. I was her teacher. She was my student. We are in such different stages of our life and we are like, it's a beautiful marriage. You know what I mean? Like, it's not your typical, but it works for us because our core is the same yeah. and our why is the same and our, you know, views on business and everything. Yes, we're growing and we're changing together, but again, that's just such a beautiful thing. And it is risky to go into business, with, business with another person. I was in business by myself for, like I said, about 10 years, never had to you know, explain myself to anybody but myself. And that's sometimes easier. So it's not, it's not like you can't do it, but there is some beautiful magic that can happen if you, if you really, you know, do find the right person. Yeah. Absolutely. And you don't have to like glaze passing. Like we have a contract. We're 50, 50 partners mm -hmm. in this. So don't like look past the business. Part. Yeah, yeah. The business side of things and make it official and cover yourself. And that's not to say, Oh, you needed a contract because you're a prenup like, waiting for this to like something to go wrong. And it's like, no, we're just solidifying that we're, we're smart 50, business 50 owners in this partnership. Yeah. Contracts are so important. And even if you were best friends before having a contract just protects 100%. both of yeah. you. Both and you. so I want to talk about brand partnerships in a minute. Cause you mentioned that you just had a big brand partnership, which mm. congratulations. Thank you. Before we get into that, I know some people listening to this may be like, okay, but how do I like start to get a brand partnership? Yeah. So what was the very first thing you two did? I know you went to coffee and kind of had that idea but after you had the idea, because lots of us have those ideas and then we just don't do anything with it. What was the next thing right. you did with that idea? I think, well, aside from just putting it out there online and seeing what would happen and who our community would be, because we weren't sure, like we had an idea, we thought it would be people like us and it was, and it was very local to our region for the first few months. And then it was picking up outside of our region and throughout Canada and now worldwide, which is mm -hmm. so crazy to say, so crazy to but say. just putting it out there, like just starting and seeing and being open to where it would go. And then in terms of partnerships, 
both of us came from the events industry. So sponsorship and partnerships weren't really like strangers to us. We knew of that kind of industry and of that world getting online. You see a lot about influencer marketing and, and influencers are really picking up in, I want to say when we started online. Um, and so it was always kind of a thought that we would have partners or wouldn't this be cool. You kind of have your wish list, like yeah. write down the people you would love to work with. And just keep that kind of in the back of your mind for when you are ready. And how we approach partnerships is thinking about who you work with or brands you use in a day to day, like what fits into your lifestyle? What do you already support? And then approaching it from there. Uh, I'm trying to think of like our very first partnership. I don't I can't really remember. I think it's smart suites. So I was going to say smart suites and we always talked about it and we ended up like looking it up, applying for their kick sugar crew. And that's the biggest thing too, is you have to seek out the opportunities. Yeah. It is great to think that they are going to come knocking on your door, but that's not really how it works. If you think about a huge company and they're going to recognize you among all these people. I mean, it does happen. It does happen, but you have to be um, proactive in, in, yeah, putting in the work to make it happen for you as well. I definitely don't see it being like glamorized. It wasn't like we're sitting back, you know, getting our wish list is this, our wish list is that. We're sending emails, we're getting it. Nothing like that. Like we don't want to be painting that picture at all. But the picture that we will paint is again that wasn't on our list right at the beginning when we first started we were just kind of going through things and it's cool to see people getting gifted things or you know imagine how much money they're getting paid to make that post for that company Mm -hmm. okay cool and exactly what sarah said you just kind of wish list it out but never underestimate you know yeah the power of connection Mm -hmm. as well as like i want to say like make a scale of your wish list like there are some small players, there's some medium players, there's some big players. And just like maybe when you think about people you want to pitch your podcast to, right? Just this is the same as us. We have some people that are, you know, really close, tight knit to our community that we want to like, you know, bring exposure to. There's medium people who are like, whoa, that'd be cool to get in front of their crew. And then we have really big people who are like, that would just be so cool to have them on there. <laughs> so you do have to have your different levels of it. But I also think it really stems down to be successful with part brand partnerships is again, knowing your why crafting your elevator pitch, getting comfortable, forgetting about the people who aren't cheering you on. Like you really have to go over a lot of hurdles to be successful in that area. And I love how actually a lot of people that we've had on our podcast who have heard in that sort of like influencer space, they talk about their insecurities and they talk about, you know, how awkward it is to like set up their tripod in like a parking garage and take the photo for that brand, but they do it. They push through those hard things. And so for us, we just, two of the things that are really core to us, really core female founded and what can we bring in front of our community that can help them? So those two things we don't stray from. We have had people contact us that don't match those two things that trust me, I would love to use their product and I would love to take the paycheck from, but we don't Mm -hmm. because it doesn't Mm -hmm. align with us. And then our community to be like, well, wait a minute, that makes zero sense. It's like when, and we get some lovely podcast pitches from males who want and know, you know, and we're just kind of like, ah, that just doesn't really fit for us right now. Right. right? So you have to really know those things before you even start. Yeah. And I think what you just said is really important too, is right now. So we never close a door on anything either. So if something comes to us, I mean, obviously that completely does not align or we don't (laughs) support in a way that door door will be closed very (laughs) hard. But when you are pitching a brand or seeking out an opportunity and they say, no, it is not, do not take it as a no forever. Yeah. Always like foster that relationship. If you love using a product or a brand and you use it, and then you approach them because you want them to sponsor an episode or be a partner. And they say they aren't taking on anyone right now. Don't stop using and taking content and tagging that product. Keep doing that so that they can see that you're still there and then revisit. And so I just think that's the biggest thing. Like 
revisiting, keep the door open, foster relationships, and do not underestimate the power of a cold DM. Yeah. I love the DMs. I have pitched major people on the podcast or to be on the podcast through DMs. And it's just, you get comfortable crafting whatever you need to craft up and saying, Hey, this is us. This is our podcast. We'd love to have you. And just seeing where it goes, like you have to ask. Yeah. You have to ask. Mm -hmm. That's one of the big things I tell my clients and really anyone with a podcast, when you first launch, people are not going to know what it is. Nope. Nope. No one is literally, <laughs> literally no one is going to know what your podcast is. And literally and no one's going to care as much as you. Exactly. So that. Yeah. yeah. So you have to be doing outreach and that's mm -hmm. one of like the t most tiring things for some people. They're like, mm, I don't feel comfortable sending those cold DMs. What if someone says no? What if someone says something mean? It happens. It happens. It all happens, but it's so important to and you get yeah. more comfortable with it, which sounds so strange, but I mean, we haven't really come across any sort of like mean things. I think it's because yeah. we're very genuine and we practice what we pe preach, but yeah, that Sarah, I'll admit it. Sarah's way more comfortable with the cold DM than I am. I'm still baby stepping my way into it. I have sent some ones that I like, again, pitches for the podcast that these people, I just want to talk to them because I follow them on Instagram. I'm like, oh my God, that would be so amazing. Never heard from them. Right. Cause mm -hmm. they're getting hundreds of thousands a day. That's okay. I'm going to try again another time. I'm still going to interact with their posts. I'm still going to like and share and do all the things that I normally did before. I'm not going to be like, well, they didn't answer my DM. So yeah, I'm not going to like that. No, yeah. not a chance. Right. And I do just think, I mean, it's not woo woo magic, but we manifest some things like literally, if you go back into the archives of save her seat, I feed smart sweets to my kids. I like the healthier candy. I don't want them to be hyped up on sugar. And so we just, I would always have them Sarah and we would chat about them on the podcast. And then the partnership kind of came from there. And so it's just little things like that. Like don't underestimate the, the little things when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Last question I have before we get into more about your community if someone has a brand that they absolutely want to work with, let's say they want to work with, I don't know, Target just came to mind. Okay. Damn, that's a we big don't have Target here. Oh no. Target's words. like, we did, we did. We did. And we then they it left away. and no then the way. borders are still closed. So we can't, or oh they're kind gosh. of getting open. But anyways, it sounds like the most basic thing, but I just love walking up and down the aisles. Just, can and, you like send oh, us a care package and we'll seriously. send you money, anything. Oh my gosh. Just buy us anything from Target. I just so want a, a Target or a Trader Joe's. Oh, that's we don't have that either. Those are literally my two favorite places on the planet survive in Canada <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. so if someone wants to partner with Target which is a big brand and for the listeners you can think of anything right here what would you recommend being the first thing to do I know you said talk about it yes. post it mm -hmm. but like how do we go yeah about I would that? say incorporate it into your day-to-day -day, into your posts showcase that you're using it and that you're proud to be using it so that one to your audience, it's authentic and it's genuine and you're being transparent because nothing is more see-through than someone posting a paid to post or an ad that's just so unaligned or so, um, I don't know what the word is like, not genuine. Yeah. Right? Like you're... it's just, yeah, not good. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> and for your outreach, find the person, find the email. If you have to use LinkedIn, Go to LinkedIn. or you, if you have to like brainstorm like Haley at podcast.com Haley G at podcast.com Haley X at po like find that email or whatever the formula of that company's email and get to that person if you can send it to an actual person versus the hello at info or hello at target whatever it's so much better because it's going right to someone's eyes. Yeah. So I think that's been a key for us. And also on our end, we have found more success in landing brand partnerships with our email being hello at fuish.ca instead of maybe our email we first started with was females who side hustle at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. So making those changes where yes, like there is a fee associated with having our branded email. I think it's about $8 Canadian a month, but it's worth it in the partnerships that we've 
got from it. It just solidifies your business a bit more and really gives you, we always say, you know what, own it till you are it. We don't like the fake it till you make it. Cause if you want to be a serious business owner and you want to be having these partnerships, you need to be acting like that from the start. Um, so it just helps you kind of get there. Yeah. I definitely think I'm a more like old school, tangible, right. I've got that post-secondary, like do your homework. Yeah. Do your research. What if this brand only does, you know, pay to post, then don't go in and ask for something different off the hop, but you got to nurture these relationships. You have to, you know, get in front of them, show them why you will be valuable to them. Mm -hmm. You can't just be in it for the money or the product. Like there is a value exchange that I feel is underrated when people are looking from the outside into influencer marketing. It is so cool. What is happening in the influencer marketing? I, I'm absolutely just enthralled with it. I think it's the coolest newest, most awesome thing that I do feel has a bad rep. And I don't like that. And I want that to change because there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. So you definitely have to be like genuine about that. You have to understand how much work goes into it. You have to see it from that big company's point of view. How are you going to benefit them? Those are all the things of business that you need to do. Um, so it makes no difference if it's, you know, trying to get in front of your clients or trying to get in front of a big brand of, of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, one other tip though, sorry, it <laughs> just came to mind, which is kind of like a newer one that I would have, you know, I probably wouldn't have said, or, or it would have came to mind like six months ago, but realize the process, like figure out what the process is because the big brand that we have worked with now, it's our second time working with them. Cause Sarah said before, nourish those relationships. We knocked it out of the park the first time we over delivered, which was our choice mm -hmm. um, because we love this brand. They came back for more and we were super happy to work with them again, but the it's not the brand who's reaching it. Like target isn't reaching out to you. It's a PR company. So figure out the PR companies that are working with these there. There's a world out there. We just had a really good uh, recording, which like our, it'll come out on our podcast in a couple of weeks with um, the owner of shine or one of the co-founders of shine influencers. And she really, really spills a lot of this world and it really opened up our eyes even more. We're not perfect in it. We've only been in it for a little bit, um, but there's so much more to discover. So you have to figure out how that world works Absolutely. before you can really, you know, go for the big guys. Cause otherwise you just might not be, you might just not be setting yourself up for success. Such good ideas. Such good ideas. Thank you so much for sharing those. <laughs> those are so actionable and it seems like it's behind such like a, like a wall almost. Yeah. Like yeah. Frosted when we glass. start thinking about it, we're like, how do people do it? And there's really right? no, and it's like, no one way. tells you and we hate that. So that's why we love having conversations of being like, if you want to know, I love initiative and I love to see someone going after what they want. And I don't believe in like getting anything handed to you, but if I don't believe in holding like that secrets to yourself either, you know, like when people are like, Oh, how did you get that partnership? We'll tell you because yeah, what's the secret? Like, exactly. you know, everyone could do it. So yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing those. So in the last couple minutes that we have, I would love it if you guys could share a little bit more about your community how people can find you and how they can get involved if they want to join female so who side hustle or just like need a community. Yeah. Well, I mean, first things first, definitely connect with us on, on Instagram. That's where we are probably most active at females who side hustle. We have our podcast, save her seat that comes out with weekly episodes, either business advice chatting between Terry and I, or we invite guests on for great conversations with women across many industries to kind of, again, get that kind of curtain pulled behind, um, on entrepreneurship. And we have our website, females who side hustle.com where you can get listed as well. So if you want to promote yourself, promote your business, you're able to get listed on our directory. Yeah. And we have a lot of resources. I'm big again about like tangibility and I want to be able to assist people, not just like on that one-on-one -on -one factor, which we do do a lot, but I want to reach the masses. I want that person who's listening to this podcast right now, who doesn't know where to start or who wants to start a podcast or, you know, has started, but doesn't know how to register their business. I want them to come across 
femalesuicidehustle.com, scroll through our blog posts, read that, feel comfort in the words that we're saying, know that we've been through that. I want you to go to our ebook section and I want you to, you know, download one of the ebooks that we have and that walks you step by step on some of the things that some of those questions you want answered, like we can do that for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, Sarah and I face to face with somebody. So we're really trying to reach those people and kind of like, I don't want to say like the dark corners of the world, because that sounds creepy. Like a resource hub for everyone who's looking into entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship doesn't have to be a lonely road anymore. Yeah, that's, that's our goal. That's our key. That's why we're here to have all different aspects, audio, written, you know, face-to-face, all the jazz for the people who just want to take that leap. Awesome. I love that. And so I love ending every single episode with you sharing three tips that the listener can start doing today. So anyone who's in that kind (laughs) of, you know, pause in their business or want to start, what do you recommend for them to start doing today? Yeah. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is just start. You hear it a million times, but everyone obviously needs to still hear it because there is that hesitation. Just start, get that Instagram, get that email, just put yourself out there. And no one ever said, you know, I wish I started later. Everyone says they wish they started sooner. So just start as your first, first tip, first tip, second tip, I would definitely say, you know, be consistent. And I know that might seem very daunting, like, okay, so does that mean, you know, I think about, um, all the, you know, social media advice, like, oh, I have to post a reel a day for 30 days. No, not that type of consistency. Think it it could just be a matter of you, like thinking, you know, about your business one day, it doesn't have to be doing actionable things about your business, but be consistent kind of, and, in that ride the wave of what's coming at you. Cause like we talked about before, it is not a straight line. You are not going to be handed an envelope. That's full of the secret answers. You are going to feel things that you've never felt before. So understand that it's, there's some ups and downs and just go with the flow. Like you really just have to do that or it's going to just be like all consuming and not fun and hard, but you can do hard things. You were meant, everyone is meant to do hard things. So I think I said like 101, very (laughs) sorry about that. The third thing would be is to lead with your side hustle, like that as a challenge to do that. Oh, I love this. Because Mm -hmm. a lot of the times when people say, oh, like, what do you do for work? Or what do you do? Why do we by default go to our nine to five? Why not lead with like what you're passionate about or what you're looking to pursue? And so I lead with females who side hustle now say like, I have an online community of like-minded, motivated females who we connect with online, on air, whatever it is. And I also work in post-secondary doing leadership programming. Like you don't have to lead with your nine to five. So take a challenge in leading with your side hustle and that'll help you get more comfortable in explaining what you do and kind of letting judgment roll off your back. That's awesome. Well, thank you two so much for being on the podcast today. Those tips are so amazing. I'm going to link everything down in the show notes so the listeners can go and find you too, because I want everyone to connect with you. I don't want anyone to feel alone and you're on the same mission. So thank you so much for joining me today. It's been so much fun. Thank Thank you for for having having us. us. Yeah, it was great. (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Employee to Boss podcast. If you made it to the end of this episode, I hope that you implement the actionable steps from this week's experts so you can get started with your business today. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Employee to Boss podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Remember, a little progress each day leads to big results. We come out with a new episode every Tuesday. To access our show notes, transcripts, and courses, please check out EspressoPodcastProduction.com.